Welcome. Don't say that. It's on the camera. <laughs> Welcome to another day of Noor Days. Noor at your service. Today, we are going to be taking you on a week long behind the scenes documentation of our partnership with On. First up, we're going to be doing an ICU care package workshop. First time in New York. First time in New York. And then we're going to be doing a live podcast Noor panel. And then this week, we're going to be following three Afghan women who are running in the New York City Marathon for another brand new episode of Rep, our investigative podcast. And then we're making a video commercial for Rep with On. And uh, as always, without your service, we want to show you our process. So welcome to Noor Day's episode So we are first making our hygiene kits. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. They have to be absolutely perfect to fit everything in. And then we're gonna do, we do a snack bag and then we put them all in with a shirt and some toilet paper. My name is Lauren Vincent. I am on the social impact team at ON. Um, a little background just on who we are and Right to Run. Um, right to Run is on social impact program. Um, we focus on democratizing movement and running throughout various communities all over the world. So, and now for our incredible panel, panel host, Noor Tagori. We appreciate you being here with us today. Let's give it up. Nora is an award-winning journalist and producer, a touring speaker focused on representation in the media. At 29, Nora has worked half her life in journalism, telling stories in every medium from radio and print to documentaries and brand campaigns. In 2019, Nora founded At Your Service, or AYS, which is a consulting and production company dedicated to storytelling as a form of service. So AYS produces original investigative series and collaborates with brands and organizations such as ON. And we are honored. Thank you, my sweet Lauren. Can we just give Lauren a big round and the ON team? OK, guys, I have to tell you, raise, like, make some noise if you made an ICU care package before you came in. This is my mom. She founded ICU Foundation and um, on our first call about this event, Adam, my partner in all of the things, this is Adam, he uh, pitched he pitched an idea that um, everyone would have to make a care package before coming in to the event to set an intention of being of service. So thanks, Adam, for your brains. Thanks, Mama, for coming here and guiding all of us in these jigsaw puzzle ways. And thank you, Lauren and Olivia and the rest of the ON team. We're so happy to be here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, every single one of you for showing up for yourselves, for this community. Thank you, Adam, for that final question. Um, it's been so beautiful being here. I think we have like uh, some time if people want to mingle and make a friend, because this is like a really, really solid group of people, guys. Like I know a lot of people here, and they're all amazing. So thank you all so much. I'm Noor Tajuri, at your service. So last night's event was awesome. It was a beautiful turnout, beautiful conversation, and this morning we are beginning our interviews for our guided rep run, and we're filming a video commercial for it. So we have three beautiful Afghan women that we are going to be learning from today. We had to get wardrobe change. Your full name and where you're from. Uh, my name is Fatima, F-A-T-I-M-A. And I'm from Afghanistan. We just finished our first interview of the day with Fatima, and I honestly like took so many mental notes because that spoke directly to my soul. She's such an incredible storyteller. 
You're about to run the New York City Marathon, yes. Alan. Woo! We're doing different faces of B-roll. <laughs> Afghan women are my superheroes. Like, actually my superheroes. You are a superhero yourself. Oh, yeah. oh, oh that's You give the best hugs. <laughs> that's true. Someone's coming for a time for the day. Yeah, I know, that's true. Somebody messaged me. Someone messaged me on Instagram yesterday. And they told me that they hadn't had a hug in over a year. And I was like, where are you? I will. <laughs> they said they would. They wanted to get a hug from me and my mom. So I told them to come here at 12.30. I've never met them. I don't know. Wow. I was like, hey. so cool. <laughs> yeah, so cool. <laughs> okay, we got right. good. Okay. So you're going to do some running shots? I want to be okay. okay. This is... Oh, my hero. We'll be here in a couple minutes with last night, and then we'll walk over with last night. We have so many photos now. <laughs> yeah. Love it. We're going to be shooting B-roll. Guys, we had two interviews and a bunch of B-roll, and our time was less than three hours, and we're on time. Can you believe it? Did, did we do a sound check? How are you guys feeling? Wonderful. Amazing. We're talking about Morocco, so Inspired. Be better. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Morocco. We're hey. talking about Ooh. learning Arabic in Morocco. We're shooting. We just left the Maybe store. We're shooting B-roll at the water. <laughs> How are you feeling? Uh, good. <laughs> yeah, just like them standing and like, just like the camera panning up with them looking up. Like I want. Yeah. She started running when she went to Afghanistan for oh, this. Yeah. Have you run a marathon? I ran my first one last year in New York. Wow. Oh, congrats. Um, yeah, thanks. So but cool. it was because of them. Like, I didn't run. I did not. I didn't run a mile. And I got there and touched down. And like Hasina said, we'd wake up at like 4.30 in the morning. The drivers would pick us up. Um, I'd like put a Zif on and get in the car. Can you direct Hasina to the interview? Yes, Hasina, let's get seated. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. <laughs> All right, ready? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sarah, Afghan Okay, Zahra, tell me the story of your first run. The very first time that I started running was when I was 14 years old and my dad encouraged me to run with him early in the morning. I didn't have a lot of sports gear, so I was wearing my skirt and my skirt and running by my father's side. Beyond good, Zahra. It was amazing. It was incredible. Every single person was so inspired by you. You told the truth, and that's all you have to do is you just tell the truth. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm getting a WhatsApp call from Adam Sharani. <laughs> He's right there. <laughs> okay, let's get this final shot. <laughs> High five! High five! High five! High five! High five! Okay, now you're free to you're free to ride. ride. <laughs> Welcome back. People don't really know, but Adam is an amazing interviewer. No, they, they don't. There's no reason to know it's not. But he, but if I just met for the first time and I did do it. But if I wanted anybody to interview me, it would be you. How do you? How much do you run before a marathon? Because don't you like have to rest before usually? Uh, so actually, like every marathon, it's like six months. And how many? Wait, so how many marathons do you do a year? Uh, so actually, before, before when I was back home. I have done like two marathons in a year or like, yeah, two marathons like a year. Is, is six hours a long time for a marathon or is that fast for a marathon? Yes, it is very slow. 
Oh, really? I think for now we are talking about four hours. Like last night, Derek was talking. He finished in three hours and fifteen something. Whoa! Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Speed. Okay, yeah. yeah, I thought that that was. So people fast. are aiming for four hours and twenty. So we are here at the Parade of Nations where um, everyone who's running in the New York City Marathon, who's like come from different countries, is going to be in a parade. They're going to be carrying flags. So the women that we are following are going to be carrying the flag from Afghanistan. We're very excited to see them. Okay. So you guys were right. So this is the staging. So they will come here first. And then if you want to film them, like to watch the whole parade, we're going to go to 63rd Street, like where we were. We could make an entire documentary film just showing Fatima, Christina, and Zappa laughing the whole time. Just laughing the entire time. <laughs> the girls are about to pick up their bins. Nor, how are you doing today? You know, just going with the flow going with the flow. I feel like I'm getting like a first-hand seat at running the New York City Marathon and everybody is so positive and so happy and like they're like where are you cheering at? Where are you cheering at? And that's like what a cool thing to think about like people being choosing to like plant their feet in a space to specifically cheer people on. Like that's so awesome. It feels like it's like the best of humanity. So I'm very excited to see our first marathon tomorrow. And like, I'm literally Hasina Baltima and Zahra's like biggest fan right now. They're so cool. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> no way. Documenting. Yeah. So we want to know about you now. Yeah, exactly. Let's turn the cookie. I started at your service officially when I in 2019, but we were producing stuff like I've been a journalist since I was 15. And wow. I was writing for a newspaper. And then I did radio, and then I did television, and then I did documentaries, and then I did podcasts, and then I was traveling around the world giving speeches. And then I was working with different like fashion brands and we would tell stories through that. Amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So what about podcasts? When did you start? So my first podcast I did in 2017, 2018. I did an, um, I spent four years investigating the sex trade in the U.S. So like sex trafficking yeah. and like mm -hmm. the opioid epidemic and the foster care uh, like crisis and all of these things. So I spent four years doing that. We did a three-part documentary, like film, and then we did a 10-part podcast series. And so that was the first time I ever did a podcast. It was an investigative one on that. Wow. Called Sold in America. 2018 Sold in America, baby. <laughs> and then this is the one that you're gonna be on. It's called Rep. It's called I Rep, a story about the stories we tell. So the way that I did Rep was that it was, um, I was asking the question, how has the way that the media has covered Muslims impacted all of American culture and society? So that was the question that we started with. So we started kind of like hold on that thread. I also have another one called Podcast Nude. I'll show you. And a series that I do like when I'm not, um, when I'm not doing investigations though. So I have a lot of different ones. <laughs> um, cool graphic. Yeah. Okay. That's Not cool. only is it a cool graphic, it's actually the coolest graphic because 
This is an artist named Sam Spratt. Do you know who that is? No. He is an incredible artist. He did the album covers for like, he's done them for like Kid Cudi, for Logic. Oh, wow. um, Sam Spratt. Sam Spratt, and he, I'll show you his Instagram. And he did for, do you know Hassan Minhaj? Yeah, yeah. He did all of Homecoming King's art. Oh, wow. cool. Yeah, you know him? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So when you do the investigation, do you work with the police or what? No, no, no. I so it's just like a research thing. No, we work with like a really big. T we have like a team I of guess like the research word investigation. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm just thinking yeah, like yeah. what it's taught. Like okay, yeah. so like investigative that's journalist. That's a really actually. great. Let's dive look at this, this language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Language. Right, first of all, are you sure you don't want to be a journalist? <laughs> I ask really be. good questions. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. So for me, when I say like investigative journalism, it means you're asking a question about like the state of something that's happening in the world and then you're in examining it. So you're like trying to, okay, so for me, if I was like, so what, how has the misrepresentation of Muslims in media impacted American culture? The way that I do my investigations is I start from the inside out. So I started with my own story and my own family. I was like, okay, this is how, uh, this is how my family has been impacted by American media investigating in people's mindset exactly they are mm -hmm. shaped and then where they come from yeah that's amazing i always say it's like who are we and why are we alive that's like the biggest investigation um so when i came to the united states i was with different groups of people mm -hmm. like when did you come uh 2021 when the evacuation plan. yeah um, so I was with different groups of people, like international students or international immigrants and also Americans. And then I was always thinking with myself, how do they think, like what do they think right now? And then how everything happened in their lives shaped mm -hmm. their thoughts about certain things. And then some people never change. And then why they don't change, right? And yeah. what happens to them that like they don't want to change or they don't want anything else um, influence them. So, and I thought it's only about Muslims, but there are a lot of other groups of people where they don't want to uh, change their mindset and they just want to go to one direction. Yeah, how does that make you feel? Some people, when they are not kind enough to other people and they do have like this negative thoughts about everybody that's entering their lives, it makes me crazy because you got to believe that there is a good person out there who wants to help, who wants to be kind, who wants to be nice. People are so afraid here. And I think one of the, the, the things that is going to be a medicine for this moment in time is like we have to be meeting people. We have to be in conversation with our neighbors and your the people at your school and stuff so that you can understand where people come from, why they think the way that they do. And it's definitely hard when one person from that particular mindset of people come out and then I'll be in a conversation with that person, for instance, and then we talk about this stuff and I talk about all the good things about my country or how Muslims are. The thing is, I haven't even tried to convince people. I just want them to think a little bit in a different way uh, when the media shows it yeah. in a different way. Yeah. Um, and it's tough. Uh, it is tough. It's really tough because some people, when even didn't hear the name Afghanistan, they would actually ghost you. Like, mm. literally. Did that happen to you? It happened to me uh, so many sorry. times in college, like where you want to build up your community, make friends and talk. And, and what they don't know are that Afghan people are the most beautiful, most loyal, like the best friends you can ever have with the best food and the best clothing and the best jewelry. And like it's they're missing out. And it's worth it when you find that person where which who actually loves to know about your country and you. And then you want to take that risk to find that particular person or that yeah. particular group where they welcome you to build that community um, and trust each other. Even if like we move to another or different city, we would always have that in our heart and like our heart is bound with that particular person who smiled all the time at you and welcomed <laughs> you in their community, took you home, even didn't know you. So. Mm -hmm. 
I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so proud of you. You're here. You're here. You're here. You're here for a reason. For many, 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 many reasons. I love you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> you ready to crush this marathon? <laughs> You're ready to run for every single Afghan girl. You're, that's who you're running for. Every single one. Including yourself. You guys are like my heroes, dude. Seriously.